So I'm currently on a small island on the very south of Thailand, uh, almost on the Malaysian border called Koh Li Bay. And I've been here for about a week, just having a little holiday. We flew from Chiang Mai to Bangkok because uh, we needed to go to the British consulate and get my, my girlfriend's visa for our trip to England, which is coming up in about a month. And flew from Bangkok to Hat Yai, which is one of Thailand's most southerly provinces, and got a boat over to, to this little island. It is really small, uh, not compiled to places like Phuket or Samui. You know, you can probably walk around it in 45 minutes. Uh, not that big at all, but it is absolutely beautiful. So really here just on a bit of a holiday, it's quite nice to get out of Chiang Mai. Uh, also, it's the height of burning season at the moment and the smoke is pretty bad. Although I will say that the reason why I'm here is not because of burning season. Did some snorkeling, went to an awesome island and saw some, some monkeys, really, really friendly monkeys. I guess the only reason why they're friendly is because people come and feed them all the time. But yeah, it was super cool, really cute, and uh, quite interesting watching them. The, the alpha monkey pretty much dominating all the other monkeys and stealing all their food. Yeah, the snorkeling spots here are, 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 are really great. You can rent a boat for 2,000 bar and go and visit some amazing islands, coral reefs. Uh, and other kind of scenic spots, have a lunch out on the ocean. Yeah, really nice day out. But other than that, I've just kind of chilled out with my girlfriend and, and I haven't really done a huge amount, but it's been, it's been really nice. Having said that though, I am very much looking forward to coming back to Chiang Mai. As always, there's been some work to do. Um, even though I take a lot of holidays, I, I'm always working on those holidays. So for a couple of hours on, I don't know, maybe 70% of the days, I have had to sit in some coffee shops or sit on my, my balcony and, and just do some work. I haven't obviously told my clients that I'm, I'm chilling on a tropical island uh, and I have no intention of them finding out either. But yeah, when I first arrived here, I was thinking, why didn't I consider somewhere like this to come as my first stop on this little digital nomad adventure? Um, it seems like paradise. The internet here is good. The food is, is, is okay. Um, you know, it's on a beach. The, the sea is unbelievably blue and turquoise. Um, it does seem like paradise. And I wouldn't say I was kicking myself a little bit for coming to Chiang Mai, but I was thinking, why, why was this never a, uh, a possibility? Uh, why, why didn't I, I come here? And, and I realize now why. Now I've been here for a few days and the, the initial wow factor has, has, has worn off. To start with, it's ridiculously hot. Uh, far hotter than, than anywhere else I've, I've been to in, in, in Thailand. Yeah, super hot, super bright and I did get burned the first couple of days I was here and I had a few uncomfortable nights of sleep. But now I've been here for eight days, I, uh, I'm absolutely convinced that I wouldn't want to, to live and work here. It's great to come for holiday, but uh, um, to even spend two weeks, I think would probably be a bit too much. The reason for that is you feel like you're trapped on an island because you are trapped on an island um, and there's nowhere really to go you know you're limited to the number of restaurants and cafes uh, that are here and there, there are a few but there's only been one decent coffee shop that I've found and I've had to go there a couple of days to to do work and, and yeah they do have a nice latte for sure but there's only one and it closes at 3.30. I'm used to Chiang Mai, where there's literally hundreds of, of coffee shops. All of them, or most of them at least, are amazing. And many close at, at seven, and a few are 24 hour. So in terms of options of where you're gonna work, 
Um, yeah, it doesn't really compare. There's certainly no co-working spaces here. Uh, not that I'm a big fan of co-working spaces anyway. I thought I'd be going to them a lot in Chiang Mai and I've been to them none so far um, because I really do prefer to work alone uh, and I find uh, other people been around me a little bit distracting. Um, and the other thing is the choice of food. So the food here is, is, is okay. It's obviously slightly different cooking to Chiang Mai. It's, it's southern food, um, which is nice, you know, I like it. I do like coconut based dishes and a lot of this is, um, but, but yeah, not, not a huge amount of choice. Uh, and again, you know, I eat out a lot, like 20 times a week at least. Um, pretty much for, for every meal. And I think you'd very quickly run out of places to go. Uh, already, I've maybe been to 10 restaurants here and only found one that I, I, I really, really like. And strangely, it seems to specialize in Northern and Eastern cooking. And I guess that's the, the type of Thai food that my, my tastes have, have acquired. So again, I, I'm, I am missing the food in Chiang Mai. Um, and the options, you know, if you want to go to noodles, you go to a noodle restaurant, you want some rice, you go to a rice restaurant, or sticky rice, or, you know, anything. Here, um, there just seems to be relatively generic Thai food, uh, a lot of green Thai curries, a lot of Massaman curries, which, you know, are really yummy. I, I like them, but um, I think you get bored of it very quickly. I guess a big issue is that this place is really set up for tourists and if you come here as a tourist you're going to have a great time. I am having a great time um, but if you were living here and particularly as a digital nomad working online I think you would get quite tired quite quickly. Um, I think that you would become a little bit annoyed with with the way that the restaurant staff are and, and, and the way that the businesses are operated. Many of these restaurants are obviously attracting people who are, are coming here, they're coming for a week or, or maybe two weeks and, and they're leaving. And so the service here isn't, isn't quite as good. And in fact, actually, we've met quite a few rude um, restaurant owners the other issue was I seem to be the only Westerner that is dating a Thai girl over here and, and there's certainly this island is for couples and families at the moment and the large groups of backpackers haven't found this place yet. Um, yeah, it's a couples island for sure. But I'm definitely the only Falang with a Thai girlfriend over here. And to say that I'm an object of curiosity has been, uh, is probably understating it a lot. Uh, I'm used to getting stared at by some Thai people, not necessarily in Chiang Mai, but in more rural areas of, of the country, um, where maybe, uh, you know, a Western face is a bit more unusual, but I'm not used to being stared at by, uh, by Westerners. Uh, and I, I don't really like it. My girlfriend doesn't like it. I suspect that we're being brushed with the very ignorant stereotype of white man with Thai girl, except I'm not 50 and she's not a bar girl. The other issue is cost. Um, it's obviously always more expensive on an island. You've got to bring everything over here. The logistics are hard. Um, all the water, all of the, the food, pretty much everything actually is shipped here. I haven't seen anyone growing anything. So yeah, it's a little bit more expensive. I can, uh, I can accept that, but it's still probably cheaper than England. In fact, it's not probably cheaper. It's definitely cheaper than England, but it's somewhere in between English prices and Chiang Mai prices. And after being in Chiang Mai for eight months, I have grown a little bit used to it and ordering a, a curry in a street food place and paying 150 baht is a bit frustrating because I'm used to paying 40 baht 
Um, so I think if you were here, you would probably end up saving less. And some of the benefits of, of moving to Thailand based on economic factors would be negated somewhat by, by living on an island. The, the rent's higher, the food's higher, the water's higher, everything's a bit more expensive. And yeah, I am looking forward to, to going back to Chiang Mai and having my 40 bar cow soy from around the corner, which is absolutely delicious and costs basically nothing. So if at the beginning of this trip, when I first arrived, I was thinking, why didn't I think about coming to somewhere like this? Not necessarily Koh Lipe, but one of the other islands. It seems to be even more so than Chiang Mai, the, the digital nomad dream. Taking your laptop and moving to a, a beautiful tropical island and living in paradise. But now, eight days wiser, I, uh, yeah, I totally realize why, and it has reconfirmed my, my opinion that Chiang Mai, for me at least, is, is the best place in the world, and it, it would take something super special to make me want to move to, to another place. Uh, islands are great for a holiday, but I wouldn't want to live here. Um, I think actually if I had moved here originally, when I first left England in August 2015 uh, and arrived somewhere like this, I don't think the, the adventure would have lasted that long. I'd like to think that I would move to somewhere like Chiang Mai, but if I didn't, I'd probably come home now. It's a little bit too much of a holiday, uh, a bit too expensive and not enough options. But other than that, I don't want to complain. The, the place is awesome. I've had a really, really amazing holiday. Um, I just don't feel like it's a place that you can can really be productive and live a full life. You can certainly have a full holiday here, but not live a full life. And that's something that, that Chiang Mai does offer and, and will continue to offer. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about coming back. I've had an awesome holiday, but yeah, time to go home.